It is all about Taekwondo and joining me now, 11-time national champion Yvette Gonda and her coach, Master Shin Lim. Thank you so much for joining us. As you guys are gearing up for the US Open, which takes place in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the first thing I have to ask Yvette is how did you get involved? I think most people, when they talk about Taekwondo, they get involved because of self-defense. What about your experience? I think, well, I started when I was eight years old and my dad just kind of put me in because I was your average couch potato kid and he just said, go do something. So that's how I first got involved. And why did you decide to make it, uh, you know, kind of your life's work so far? I think it just kind of fell on me. It was one of those things where I just did it on an average basis, just weekly classes. And then I decided to take the competition route and I just really enjoyed it and I was doing well at it. So it just kind of came upon me, I guess. And for you, Master Lim, did you know that you were dealing with a, a future champion? Um, not in the beginning, because she started she was eight. And that age, sometimes, you know, you can't tell too much. But uh, when you get to the close to the um, finish line, you can never to tell who's going to win, who's going to, you know, who's going to fail, who's going to give up. So she has a type that never give up, you know, and so that you can tell she has, uh, you know, more than an average kid that's a little bit difficult, they quit, right? How do you mold a champion? Um, I think it's more to do with the teamwork. It's not how well is the you know, instructor or, or coaches are, or it's not how well is the, the athlete is. It's some more you know, teamwork by parents and then the coaches and then the athletes together, working together. What are some of the aspects that, that you really like about Taekwondo? I think it just gives you a drive, a focus. It's you, you learn to prioritize and set goals and you, you work towards them. And it's, nothing feels better than uh, reaching one of those goals. And talk about the, the nerves of competition. Of course, you're a uh, multi-time national champion. You've won gold at the Pan Am Games. Uh, what do you do to try to get rid of those nerves? On average, I throw up. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, it comes with it. It comes with the package. You just, I mean, you accept it, you deal with it. And I mean, those aren't bad nerves. So you just accept it and, and just go work through it. So I mean, it's normal. Are champions built or are they born? I think it takes a little of both. Um, I can't say one or the other, uh, or depend on the person. Um, so I, I think uh, you could start with the uh, people that, you know, uh, basics, which means the, uh, when, you, when you look at the athletes, sometimes you don't know they have it until you work with them, and then they don't know, even know until they start to getting used to it, and they're like, wow, I could do this. So I think uh, it's a little of both. Is the preparation, that we know the Canadian Nationals are c coming up in May, uh, the U.S. Nationals are coming up very, very soon. Is there any difference in the preparation for the two, either one of you? I mean, like with the, anything with any open events, such as the Canada Open or the U.S. Open, you set different benchmarks with your coach and you have a goal for each event. So if you want to work on something specific, that's your card targeted goal. So I mean, each one we have a benchmark we'd like to reach, so we just take take it for the long run. So we kind of prepare as in, we work on this for the Opens, but I, eventually we want to get to be performing well at say a World Championships or a Pan Am Games or eventually the Olympic Games. So everything else I think is, uh, to me, a step stone. It's a bigger picture. So you get to the, because her goal is Olympic. She went to two Olympics. So you can, you know, every nationals or US Open, any tournaments, it's just a step stone to get there. Now, of course, the Olympics, I think for any athlete, uh, that is the end result. You guys have been there before and you've dealt with some controversy. How do you move forward knowing that some things are out of your hands? Um, so there's two things, something that you can control of, something you cannot control of. Like weather, I cannot control of that. Only I could do is I could maybe raining, that I can bring umbrella up. I could do something against it, but it's limited sometimes. So maybe uh, mats are slippery or you know, sometimes judges, because uh, Taekwondo is a judge sport. Sometimes we cannot control over what score, what not score. Um, so if you cannot control of it, then we cannot get you know angry or we cannot just we go go with it. Something we can change, like technical problem or sometimes a technique problem, then we can go home and work so we can do better the next time. To give us a showcase of the power and precision of Taekwondo, we're going to get a demonstration. Sure. Take it away. Um, we're going to start with the, how we practice in class. Because uh, whatever you do in class is going to be towards to competition. So we're going to show you a little demonstration of kicking targets. So it seems like this. So, okay. yeah, so we're going to do a couple of just basic kicks. We're going to start with. Here we go. Gotcha! 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 
Okay, yeah. some attacks counter. That's it. So coming forward, anything you're coming for, we say attack. Something going back is a Gacha. counter. Body shot, head shot, double, Gacha. 360, Gacha. bam, and a back kick, bam. So you can stop them and then coming in. About now, we're going to see you break some boards. All right. Hope everybody's okay in here. Good luck at the US Open and the Canadian Open takes place this May.